interview to a Russian broadcaster, Vladimir Putin said Russia is ready to negotiate with all parties involved in the war, but said Kyiv and its Western backers have refused to engage in talks. Putin has used the concept of quote-unquote historical Russia to argue that Ukrainians and Russians are one people, undermining Kyiv's sovereignty and justifying his 10-month offensive in Ukraine. He said Russia's geopolitical opponents were aiming to tear apart Russia, the historical Russia. Divide and conquer, that's what they have always sought to accomplish and are still seeking to do. This is what Putin said during that television interview. But also adds that our goal is different. It is to unite Russian people. Putin declared that his government was acting in the right direction. Let's listen in. I think that we are acting in the right direction. We are protecting our national interests, the interests of our citizens, our people, I repeat once again. And there is no other choice other than the protection наших граждан у нас просто нет. Но мы готовы договариваться со всеми участниками этого процесса о приемлемых каких-то развязках. Но это их дело. Не мы же отказываемся от переговоров, а они. In the same interview, he was uh, posed a number of questions. He appeared unfazed when he was asked about the new air defense system that United States will deliver to Ukraine. Responding to it, he says we will destroy it 100%. Putin also said, referring to the Patriot missile battery promised to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, said that he is not afraid of those deliveries. Remember, earlier this month, just on the 12th of December, there was heavy fighting in the country's east and south that has continued unabated. Drone and missile strikes on key power infrastructure has kept many Ukrainians in the cold and the dark, prompting President Zelensky to respond to this situation. Let's listen in. Сьогодні мільйони людей відзначають Різдво за Григоріанським календарем, і я ще раз вітаю всіх, хто святкує саме зараз цими днями. І хочу, щоб ми з вами зараз ще раз подякували разом, причому подякували усім тим, хто і цими днями, і в будь-який інший час робить все, аби ми з вами могли жити, жити своїм життям і у своїй країні. Дорогі українці, залишилось кілька днів цього року, ми маємо бути свідомими, що наш ворог Спробую зробити цей час для нас темним і складним. Росія програла цього року все, але намагається компенсувати свої програші зловтіхою своїх пропагандистів після ракетних ударів по нашій країні, по нашій енергетиці. Я знаю, що темрява не заважатиме нам проводити окупантів до нових їхніх поразок, але ми маємо бути готовими до будь-яких сценаріїв. Будь ласка, цими днями дослухайтесь до повітряних тривог ще раз. Будь ласка, пошукайте і запам'ятайте, де знаходиться найближчий пункт незламності. Earlier this week in his first trip outside Ukraine since the offensive began, President Zelensky earned firm pledges of support from US President Joe Biden, including the Pentagon's most advanced air defense system. Western military and financial aid has been crucial for Ukraine's pushback of Russian troops, including from Kherson, the only regional capital was held by Russia. Despite Russia's retreat from the city, it remains within reach of Moscow's weaponry and under constant threat. So that's the background to this entire statement that has now come from uh, the Russian president. I am going to go across to Anil Trigunyet, former deputy ambassador to Russia. Is Ambassador Trigunyet with us yet? Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Anil Trigunyet. Very good evening to you and thanks for joining good us. Good here on the program. Uh, the interesting part of the statement, uh, Ambassador Gunyat, is that now you have Mr. Putin actually saying the Ukrainians and the Russians are one people and the Western backers of Kyiv are trying to divide us. Are you reading it as some sort of a peace overture or do you look at it as an attempt to wean off Zelensky from his Western backers? What do you make of this statement of Vladimir Putin? Well, I think this is uh, more targeted at the Ukrainian people rather than on President Zelensky. Uh, and if you come to think of it, that uh, in uh, two years ago, uh, nearly President Putin had it in a letter in which he justified the historic connect uh, between Ukraine and Russia, that they are the same people. And in fact, the Orthodox Church started from Kyiv itself. And the Kyiv used to be the capital at one time of the larger Russia. Those are the kind of historic connect he always believed and felt. And that was perhaps one of the reasons that he did not want to go full out against uh, Ukraine or against Kyiv. 
uh, to decimate it in the beginning itself. But at the same time, now I think that there is a war fatigue that has come in on all sides. Uh, and this war, as I always say, is not uh, between Russia and Ukraine alone. It is a war between Russia and the West, especially the United States. So President Zelensky's recent visit uh, to U.S. was also being perceived uh, that perhaps the Americans would now try to uh, tell or work out some kind of a, uh, a way forward where President Zelensky is ready to go have talks with President Putin. As far as Putin is concerned, he has often said that he's ready for any talks. And in fact, talks were held in, uh, as you know, both in Belarus as well as thereafter in Turkey. Yes. Uh, several times, President Prime Minister Modi has spoken to President Putin as well as today, as you know, President Zelensky spoke to Prime Minister Modi today again. Yes. So I think that there are peace overtures all over, and peace is up, at least ceasefire is required immediately. And uh, otherwise, this war will continue like this as long as uh, Ukraine continues to receive the support uh, from the West, especially in terms of the arms and munition. And if they, if they are able to get offensive arms with a larger, longer reach, then this war could also perhaps go into the next level, which will be the most disastrous for the world. Yes, it could be disastrous for the world. And like you rightly said, that perhaps the war fatigue has set in and Mr. Putin also has perhaps realized that it's not as if Russia is immune to the damage and uh, the kind of uh, uh, damages that have been inflicted in terms of uh, the sanctions that have come in from all quarters. That, uh, do you think, also could have been a factor, the fact that Russian economy has had to suffer? Well, at the moment, I don't see any signs that the Russian economy is greatly suffering. Uh, because in my view, the Putin has been preparing for this kind of an eventuality because uh, the the Western uh, template is very clear, and that clear is, uh, clarity is about imposing sanctions. Yes. So he has been ready for these sanctions, I think, for the last ten years, and in the meantime, he has worked out these kind of strategies that he will follow, and he did follow. So the ruble is strong at the study, but it, they are going to bite him in the uh, in time. Mm -hmm. It's not go, no country can be immune when uh, it's trading partners, technology availability, and you know there is so much of interdependence across uh, the world. I mean uh, any country for that matter. So we've been trying to see. So now the, the, uh, in that sense, Putin is obviously looking at a longer region. Then he has also taken a hit. In my view, I'm not a military expert, but I know that any war that is fought for more than 10 days or 15 days is a lost war. So anybody, bigger powers, none of the superpower, I can tell you today, and you can go back into the history in the last uh, 80, 70 years, has won a single war. United States lost in Afghanistan, lost in Vietnam, China lost in Vietnam, Soviet Union lost in Afghanistan. And so the superpowers have not got a history. They have a history of um, of destruction and disruption anywhere in the world. They can do so because they have, yes. but they have not been able to either win the war or peace, neither, anywhere. We have seen in Iraq, we have seen in Libya. So all these superpowers, in my view, uh, are culpable to that extent. So at the same time, the peace is something that India has been asking. Prime Minister Modi has often said it. And I think that we need to just any country that can work towards it, including India, must work uh, for peace and dialogue and some kind of a ceasefire immediately. Yes. So that the humanitarian catastrophe that is happening in Ukraine could be stopped. Yes, it remains to be seen whether those negotiations or talks will even happen. Uh, we haven't heard a response uh, from Mr. Zelensky yet to that overture. But I want to ask you, since you mentioned, and of course, we've reported about this Prime Minister Modi being, uh, you know, had a conversation with President Zelensky. How is India going to play a role in any of this if we are to assume that negotiations take place? Well, I think we can, uh, to, to start with, we can say that we'll be happy to host um, the discussions in India. Okay. I mean, New Delhi can be a neutral ground for both the countries. We are friendly to both. And they can come and talk. We can understand what are their requirements. And they have their own. You see, every country makes a very inflexible position before starting the negotiations. It appears that you cannot. But then we have seen that the most intractable of uh, problems have been resolved through negotiations. And at the end of the day, the war is not a solution. It does not yes. last forever. Diplomacy is the solution before the war, during the war, after the war. 
So I think that this they should give a full chance to this. And India is generally trusted. We are now hosting the G20. We are part of the uh, with, with the SCO with Russia is our special strategic partner. We have been supplying humanitarian assistance to Ukraine all through. Uh, we have uh, called out uh, the catastrophe that is happening human. Uh, you know, humanitarian catastrophe. We have supported uh, the, their territorial integrity openly. And so I think, and President Prime Minister Modi has clearly told President Putin uh, that uh, era of war is over. And uh, President Putin said he's ready for talks. So he's been saying it for quite some time. But it is also a fact that this whole war or whatever is happening at the moment is essentially predicated on the role that the United States and the Western countries will play. Yes. So that, that is very important because they are playing a critical role. So how right. do they perceive weakening of Russia? Because see, the whole world is suffering because of this weaponization of financial instruments, weaponization of energy, food and fertilizers. So every country in the world is suffering out of this. Yes, yes. It's in everyone's interest, like you rightly said, uh, for this war to end. And let's hope good sense prevails over the leaders, over the stakeholders involved in this. Thanks very much, Ambassador Trigunier, for joining us here this evening. Thank you.